Okay, so it says uh, uh, some what? Some resistance. When, when is this one? Okay. Carries the maximum current possible without damaging the register. If the current or R register have the value, what would be the power of course? Okay. So I think uh, it's a, a good... Um, the way to approach this question would be to think of it like a scaling argument question. I think I might have given that in some places. Scaling argument is a kind of a mental math technique that will allow you to calculate some things super quickly. So here, without writing anything down, without using my calculator, I can, just with the mental math alone, figure out the answer is 0 0.125 Watt. And this is how I did that, just in my head, in less than a minute. So I do remember some relationships. You do need to remember some forms of equations to use scaling, uh, scaling relationships. And here, the relationships you need to remember are power used in electric circuit, which as a kind of a, the basic form, I have this one memorized. Current times voltage. This is pretty fairly closely tied to the definition of power as the change in energy per unit time. And uh, there's a way to connect that conceptually. So that's what I start out with. Now, in context where you are dealing with uh, resistors, so you have Ohm's law to work with, the current through some register is the amount of voltage imposed divided by resistance. So when you have Ohm's law to work with, you can rewrite this expression in two different ways. It comes down to a choice of, do you eliminate current or voltage? If you eliminate current by plugging this in, you can see it. plugging in V over R, I get V squared over R. Or you can choose to eliminate voltage. You would solve this for V and plug that in. I can see I get I squared. And so you get I squared times R. So here, the form of the equation that and turns out to be useful is this one. Power dissipated by a register is I squared R. For two reasons, whenever you are dealing with a register, this is actually the formula I would recommend because it minimizes chances of making some mistakes that are common for people to make. That one. Two, here in this question, they are talking about the changing the value of the current. And this is where the scaling argument comes in. So I stare at this equation for a while, and I notice the relationship between power and current. I see that power is proportional to current squared. So that means whenever I make a change to, to the current in proportional terms, I have to square the change and that squared amount of proportional change will be directly proportional to the power. So that's the mental math I did. I did, okay, I'm reducing the current to half. So if my current goes down to one half current, then my I squared will be going down to one fourth I squared. I squared one half to get one fourth. So the only piece of math I had to do is I had to take 0 0.5 watt, which was the power it was already uh, already already dissipating, and I divided it by four. And that's another piece of <laughs> mental math that some people do. But you know, if you can't do that in your head, then you can always use your calculator. But uh, doing this portion of scaling argument will help cut down on some of the uh, some of the things that people, um, I guess, uh, some of the unnecessary bits of math that's not absolutely necessary to answer questions like this. Because, uh, like, if you are working at the maximum current first, and then actually having it, and then plugging it to find the power, that's, you know, too many steps. It's, uh, um, it's good to do once, and I guess never again. <laughs> so... So with that, uh, let's see, I got, um, so it says, um, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep it here. So let me just uh, erase the bits that have to do with the scaling argument. I don't know if I'm going to need it until I read it, read the question. So, um, 
So the question says, your car's some power, headlight and some power stutter are ordinarily connected in parallel. Okay, so this uh, parallel is important. Let me, let me diagram this. I think with a diagram I can kind of talk through it. So if I imagine my car battery as a battery, it's providing some amount of voltage. And how stuff are hooked up to this uh, thing, it matters because um, how they are hooked up determines what amount of voltage they get and how you calculate the power. So it says they are connected in parallel, which means you have headlight here connected directly to this delta V. And the starter is also connected directly to that delta V. I think starter is what? Some kind of plug or motor? You know, I don't know enough about cars. Sorry. I'm a physicist, not a mechanic. <laughs> um, but so both of the, what's important here is that they are both getting the full voltage of 12 volts. Um, whereas if they are connected in series, then the 12 volt will be somehow divided between the two. So it says, what power would the one headlight and the starter consume if connected? Ah, interesting. Okay. So I think here the thing to do is work out the effective resistance of both of these elements. So I have some R effective for light. We'll work that out. And we have some R effective for starter and work that out. Because uh, when once we start thinking about connecting them in series to the battery, it, they're not how they're meant to be connected. That's not how they work. So the only way we can work it out is treating it, modeling it like something that we know how to model. And registers, register is one thing that we know how to model. So we'll treat it like registers. So to work out the resistance, uh, so we're given their power consumption information. So this is still going to be useful. So we need their R while we are given their V. Um, so, ah, okay. I think I am looking at this uh, equation here that is, it relates to power, has voltage information, needs R. So I can solve this for R to get move R over, move power over, V squared over amount of power you consume. And so like for the headlight, it'll be like V squared, 12 volts squared, divided by the power uh, 30.5 watt. And if you're wondering how does V squared over watt somehow work out to be ohm, uh, this is the portion of the electricity and magnetism where I'll say, uh, don't worry about it. If you kept everything in basic SI unit, you can trust that unit two will work out. <laughs> so I'll just leave that there. I don't need to verify for myself that this is correct relationship. I will trust in the design of the SI unit system. So, uh, so let me write down R effective of the headlight is going to be the voltage. 12 volts squared divided by its amount of power usage. Uh, let me work out the R effect of the starter. So we are applying the same amount of voltage and dividing by different amount. So 0 0.5 kilowatt, that's 500 watt. So I'm just going to divide by 500 watt um, R effective of the starter. Yeah, that's pretty low. Okay, so I guess the, since they're not asking for their separate power consumption, but just the total power consumption, let me just do that. So I can get the total effective resistance by adding them in series. And in series, they just add. Um, you've seen that in lecture and elsewhere. I'm just going to add them. So given this effective resistance, yeah, it's higher, we can uh, plug that in here with the voltage to calculate the new power. So 12 squared divided by effective resistance is equal to 20.75 watt. Now, if you are comparing this with this and seeing that it's low, uh, make sure this uh, makes sense to you, that th that is what you would have intuitively guessed. 
that the power consumed by these two things connected in series, it's going to be lower than the lower amount of power used by either of these two. It has some connection to how the resistance being added in series is related to the registers that you are adding together. Um, and uh, we did cover a little bit of that in the lab, so I think I'll just uh, leave that flag for you to consider. Uh, let me know if any questions. I'm happy to address that in more depth if uh, people request. So uh, this question says, uh, short circuit in a short circuit, <laughs> all right. 12 volt appliance cord has a 0 0.5 ohm resistance, all right. Uh, RB. Oh, it's got multiple steps. All right, so I have to use a few steps. So it looks like it's having us bring in some material from our thermodynamics. So uh, let me do it in two steps. I think the very first thing um, we will do is the amount of energy that's going to be transferred to the surrounding materials. Uh, they give us enough information that we can use to calculate power and they tell us uh, the amount of time, which will uh, give us the amount of energy. So, you know, the power, which in electrical context, we can say is current times the voltage. And in a broader mechanical context, it's the amount of change in energy per time. Um, now here we are given the voltage, but not the current. So we'll have to use Ohm's law. Um, so what am I eliminating? I'm eliminating <laughs> Ohm's law to work out the uh, uh, the expression for power in terms of the voltage and the resistance. And if I plug this in for I, then I can eliminate current and get V squared over R. So plug in this, and I'll get amount of power that the circuit is dissipating. Power that the circuit is dissipating is a voltage. 120 volt squared divided by 0 0.5 ohm. Now, for those of you who might be thinking, um, so might be worried about um, kind of the specific arrangement in the home uh, electrical circuit, like we, we, when we talk about electricity at this point in the semester, we talk about mostly DC circuit, direct current, constant voltage. This, in a typical home, will be AC voltage. And what I will tell you is that um, if that concerns you, that's great. You are worried about details, that's great. And I will tell you that this detail is already taken care of. So when your home has 110 or 120 volt uh, power circuit, that 120 volt they are telling you is what's called the RMS voltage. Um, it's 120 volt root mean square. And the nice thing about the RMS values of things is that when you use them in formulas like a power formula, uh, the, the power consideration will automatically work out. This is the average power uh, due to that 120 volt RMS of applied voltage. Because by squaring this voltage, you've undone the square. So you have uh, the voltage that's been, oh, sorry, sorry, oh, you've undone the square root. So you have voltage that's been uh, average after it's been squared. So, uh, so yeah, so, so that's the amount of power. I need to multiply it to the time. So power times 0 0.05 for the, uh, that's gonna be the amount of energy <laughs> that goes into the surrounding material in, um, Joules and it says assuming their specific capacity is that and four gram. Oh, yeah, so this is where we have to remember our thermodynamics. And this feels like a calorimetry material where amount of heat transferred is equal to the specific heat capacity times the amount of material in mass times uh, change of temperature, right? So we've worked out the amount of heat being transferred. That's the number we worked out here. And oh, they give us the specific heat capacity and they give us the mass. Let me just write it out and see if it all just works out. So solving this for delta T, change of temperature, um, I have the amount of uh, energy transferred, 1440 joule 
I have specific capacity 0 0.87 joule per gram times degree C times the mass 4 grams. I'm writing out all the units so that I can verify that joules cancel, grams cancel. It's a 1 over 1 over degrees of C, so you will end up with a degrees of C. Okay, so if I do 1440 divided by 0 0.87, that'll give me the answer in degrees C. Um, so 1447, so 1440 divided by 0 0.87. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is a, a kind of a number sense question where it's a highlighting. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I made a math mistake which is I have to take this and multiply to that. So let me just do that. Um, so 1440 divided by 0 0.87 times 4. Uh, 413.8. And the point I was going to make still remains the same, which is the, uh, you know, fire hazard of electrical failures. <laughs> so even if the circuit breaker was able to kick in within 50 milliseconds, uh, this is a temperature high enough to ignite certain things like paper. Um, so if your uh, surrounding is built out of flammable material, it could catch on fire. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the main lesson there.